we have learned that markups are handmade drawings prepared by a qualified designer that show symbols and text annotations and give a clear idea of what needs to be done. We also learned that shop drawings are the professionally made preliminary drawings used to make sure that all parties are on the same page before continuing the work. Now we are ready for the next type of drawing and it is a crucial one. Introducing permit drawings. A fire alarm system is not ready for installation until the local AHJ, short for Authority Having Jurisdiction, approves the drawings. The drawings submitted to the AHJ, many times that being the fire marshal, are called the permit drawings. Permit drawings start with nicely done shop drawings, which include special information showing that the design and drawing documents meet applicable codes and local AHJ requirements. Permit drawings when approved are your ticket to get the coveted notice to proceed. Just like gourmet coffee, permit drawings are a masterful blend. In this instance, it's a blend of knowledge and experience in the fire alarm field. Some jurisdictions may only require permit drawings to meet a national code, but others are more stringent and have their own local requirements or their own ordinances that must be met. Large and important cities have their very own full-blown fire code which took years to put together. Permit sets require great care and diligent research of all requirements in order to be approved. This is why you need someone who specializes in this field to do your drawings. Watch out for the following, it's important. AHJs review permit drawings with two things in mind design compliance and submittal compliance. So, in addition to making sure that the fire alarm design layout is compliant, permit drawings must also comply with AHJ requirements pertaining to the submittal documents. That's right. It's also about what tailored content and detailed information is included in the drawings. This means that in addition to the usual requirements by NFPA 72, such as floor plans, a riser diagram, a sequence of operation, a legend, calculations, etc. The permit drawings must also contain additional information about the building, the site location, and lots of good stuff. The level of requirement varies from city to city, but neglecting special requirements leads straight to the path of rejection. This is why permit drawings are prepared only by trained and qualified professionals. A growing number of states now require permit drawings to be signed and sealed by a professional engineer. Some may accept a certified technician's license, but this is going away and quickly. In addition to wide format plans, permit drawings must be accompanied by a booklet, including spec sheets, duly highlighted for the plan reviewer. In closing, the art of CAD engineered permit sets requires knowledge of codes and local ordinances for the design and the information contained in the drawing submittals. Once permit drawings are approved, they are appropriately stamped by the AHJ and even redlined when pertinent. Compliant permit drawings will get a big, welcome stamp of approval, which means it is time to do the work. Your hard-earned, stamped, and approved permit drawings are your pass to start the installation. In the next video, we will learn how permit drawings can now be turned into and used for installation depending on whether or not installation details are required to be added. See our next video, Drawing Types Part 5, Installation Drawings, for detailed information.